The simplest way to find the inverse of a matrix is to use a calculator. There are formulas and ways of finding inverses by hand, which are things that I require my college math 1050 college algebra class to do. But we are just going to use a graphing calculator, or in this case, Desmos.com and their matrix calculator to help us find the inverses of each matrix. And then we're going to show how we can verify those inverses are true, which is what you're going to need to be able to do on your Khan Academy assignment today. So I'm going to go to Desmos.com. So here's a, a smaller window version of that. So we can see my list of directions and Desmos at the same time here. So I primarily in the past used Desmos as a graphing calculator because it will create graphs of equations that you type into it, right? But uh, for our purposes today, we're actually just going to use the matrix calculator, which should be here at the top. Instead, it's giving me other options, which are not what I, oh, I just didn't have it wide enough to show. Okay, there, I expanded my window. So now you can see at the top of my window, I have math tools, right? So I'm gonna click on math tools, and then I have all sorts of different calculators in here that I can use. Um, I'm going to go to the matrix calculator, which is the next item here in my list. So now I'm going to click on new matrix, and if I don't want my matrix to be a two by two, I can adjust the size of the matrix any way that I need to by clicking on these buttons down here. Desmos automatically names my matrices with letters that it assigns. I don't think there's any way to change those letters. And then when we're done creating the matrix, it will allow us to use the letters assigned to each matrix to do operations with them. Okay, so for the problem right here that we're doing, problem three, we want to find the inverse of this matrix, negative 11, 8, 10, negative 8. So I'm going to type in those numbers, negative 11, 8, 10, negative 8. One thing I really like about the Desmos matrix calculator is that it doesn't care that I use the, the minus symbol for negative, whereas a lot of graphing calculators are picky about the difference between the minus button and the negative button. But this one, it doesn't matter. Okay, so all I've accomplished so far is I've basically just told Desmos that this is my matrix that I'm working with, and it's called it matrix A. So now to find the inverse, I'm going to come down here to these buttons and find matrix A, and then I find the button that says A to the negative 1, so that is finding the inverse of that matrix. So you can see that right here. Right now it's giving it to me in decimal form, but if I hit that button next to it, it changes that to fraction form instead. I don't care which way you write your answer. Fraction form is usually a little bit neater because sometimes your decimals like go forever and they're hard to write repeating decimals down into your matrix, whereas the fractions are easier to write down. Okay, keep putting this in my way. Set that over there. I think that'll work. So now I need a pen to write down my answer. And my one window disappears every time I start to write. So I just got to remember it. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 5 fourths, negative 11 eighths. So negative 1, negative 1, negative 5 fourths negative 11 eighths. Now, how can we tell for sure that that is the inverse? Well, we can actually multiply these matrices together. And then if we get the identity matrix, we will know that they are inverses. So just to show you that really fast, let's go back to our matrix calculator in Desmos. And this matrix can just be called A to the negative one. I don't have to type it in again. I can just use it as it is. So let's go to the next, hit enter and go to the next option where I'm going to type in A and then I'm going to multiply and then do 
a, but this time on a, I'm putting a negative one power. So I have matrix A, which is the matrix I originally typed in that looks like, let me use my regular mouse, the tablet is not liking me. Okay, so this represents matrix A, and then A to the negative one is this matrix right here. So this is the original matrix, and this is the inverse matrix, correct? And I've asked those to multiply together. So you can see my answer over here on the right. What happens when I multiply those two matrices together? What matrix do I get? I get 1, 0, 0, 1. I get the identity matrix. Does that help me prove that this really is the inverse of this? If I multiply them together and I get the identity, does that make sense? That's a way of verifying that it worked. So this matrix and this matrix are inverses of each other because if we multiply them together, we get the identity matrix. What's the point of all this? Well, inverse matrices allow us to do division with matrices that we can't normally do just by dividing. Instead of dividing matrices, we actually multiply by an inverse. And that allows us to divide, which it allows us to use matrices to solve certain types of problems. I'm not sure if we'll have time this quarter to get into those types of problems, but that's what they would be used for. Okay, let's go to our next problem here, number four. So I'm just going to choose a new matrix. This one's a three by three. So I'm going to increase the dimensions of the matrix and type those numbers in. So 1, negative 3, 7, 7, 1, 5, 4, 5, negative 6. So enter that one so that I know that that's now matrix B. So now I can go down to B and choose my A to the negative 1. Even though it's an A, if I select the B first and then do that button, that just tells it to find the inverse. What do you notice appeared over here on the right? This matrix does not have an inverse. That must mean that its determinant is zero. Let's check and see. So if I do the determinant button and type in matrix B, look over here on the right, the determinant of that matrix is zero. So it really does not have an inverse. So I'm gonna write that here. No inverse. Okay, we have two more 2 by 2s and two more 3 by 3s that you can practice right now. And then we can check our answers together in a few minutes. Do that really fast. All right, hopefully you had a chance to pause your video and look at these problems and find the answers. So number 5 is the inverse 1 fifth, negative 1 fifth, negative 9 fifths, and positive 4 fifths. Number 6, the inverse is 1 over 14, 2 over 7, negative 5 over 14, and negative 3 over 7. And then for number 7, the inverse is whole numbers. It's weird. It doesn't have fractions in it. So 5, negative 11, negative 4, negative 4, 9, 3, negative 7, 15, 5. And then number 8, the inverse is 5 ninths, negative 4 ninths, negative 29, 40 fifths, 4 ninths, negative 5 ninths, negative 5 ninths, 4 ninths, negative 5 ninths, and negative 34 45.